So you have decided that you're gonna buy Canon. You've got a budget in mind. Then you've started to look on the internet for Canon cameras. You've suddenly realized that there is cameras just above your budget and just below your budget. And some of them may have 40 frames per second, some may be full frame crop sensor. And all of a sudden you have got 10 tabs open and you're reading six different reviews on one camera and you still don't know what Canon model to buy. Well, luckily for you, I've got all of them and I'm gonna go through them all from top to bottom and hopefully by the end of this video, you're gonna know which model is right for you. Now we're gonna be looking at the Canon R range, which is all of their mirrorless range. And we're gonna start from the most expensive and go right the way down to the least expensive in their range. And at this point, I just wanna thank Wex Photo Video, which is a brilliant camera and videography store. They've sent me all of this stuff so I can play to my heart's content and bring you this video. So if you're looking to buy any of these cameras, please click the link in the description of this video. It will take you to Wex. And if you buy, we will get some money. So that would be good for us. So please do that if you're gonna buy one of these cameras. Right, let's start from the very top. And that is this bad boy here. It's the Canon R3. And as you can see, it towers over all of these other cameras here. Now the body only price for this is 5,500 pounds. And incidentally, I'm gonna give you the body prices for all the cameras that we look at today as of when we're filming this. So obviously prices change, but as of filming this video, the prices I'm gonna give you are accurate. Now, if you are looking at buying the Canon R3, then you certainly don't need me <laughs> to tell you to buy it, all right? Because it's the most expensive, it's 5,500 pounds. So most people are not just gonna be throwing that around willy-nilly. So to put it in a nutshell, the R3 is for professional sports photographers mainly, people that need action fast, fast, fast. Let's say F1 at the side of an F1 track or at the side of a football match when you're watching West Ham win the FA Cup. The next camera we're gonna look at is the Canon R5. Now this is probably the one that most professionals buy. The body only retail price is around 4,000 pounds. And there is two versions actually of the R5. And I'll just get that out of the way first. You've got the R5 and then you've got the R5C. Roughly the same price. And the main difference is one is geared for videographers and one is more geared towards photographers. Now that is not to say that either one of them will take brilliant um, photography and brilliant video, all right? It's just that the C version is for videographers mainly. It's Netflix ready, it does 8K raw video, all right, which is absolutely mental. So if you're a videographer, then you're gonna go for the C range, and if you're a normal photographer that does a bit of videography, you're probably gonna go for the normal R5. So this is the R5 here, this one right here. It's a full frame mirrorless camera aimed at professionals and it will do portraits just as good as it will do landscapes, macro, wildlife, whatever. It really is a good camera for all genres really. It takes a 45 megapixel uh, image which is absolutely massive. Its fastest frame rate is 20 frames per second on electronic mode. It's got an absolutely superb autofocus tracking system which will track people, faces, eyes, it will track animals, and it will track vehicles as well. So there's a lot of technology packed into this camera. It will film 8K RAW, if you need that, and it's also got an eight stop in-body image stabilizing system. Now they really do come in handy for hand holding, basically if you're hand holding and shooting, you know, that's a really good feature to have. Its maximum ISO is 51,200, which is more than enough, coupled with the full frame sensor and that massive resolution, you're gonna be able to do some really good low light photography with this camera. 
They have two card slots, one for a CF Express card and one for normal SD card, should we say. And it also has what it calls an IBIS high resolution mode. And it enables the camera to do nine separate pictures, stitch them together and give you a 400 megabyte raw file. Now that is massive. So this camera has got it all, but it's made for professionals and you need to understand that, right? Oh, there's going to be people out there that have got loads of money and they're just going to get the R5 and good luck to them, right? But this camera is made for professionals. It's made to be used constantly, you know, week in, week out on jobs. And coupled with a lens, the R5 is going to be setting you back, I would say, at least five and a half thousand pounds. And that's a lot of money for a camera. And depending on when you're watching this particular video, there could be a Mark II version of this out. All right. There's rumors that there is an R5 Mark II out. So whenever you're watching this, I don't know, it might already be out. And if it is out, then it may be time to grab some second hand ones of these because that would be a bargain. So there's the R5 blinding camera. It's the one that I would choose if I'm going to be totally honest. If I was going to choose any of these, I'd be having the R5. It actually replaces the old 5Ds, if you know what that is, and they are brilliant cameras. I've still got my 5D Mark IV. It is absolutely brilliant. It works exactly the same today as it did when I bought it when it was first released. I don't know when that was, but that was years ago. They're still producing the 5Ds at the minute, as a matter of fact, but for argument's sake, the R5s are the next generation of the 5Ds. So now let's move on to the R6 Mark II, which jumps down in price to body only 2,780 is as of today, all right? This obviously might be different by the time you watch this video. And that is this one here, and it is a blinding camera. It is full frame again, like the R5, but it has a 24.2 megapixel sensor. Don't let that put you off. 24 megapixels is more than enough. Now, what it has extra than the R5 is a faster frame rate. So this shoots at 40 frames per second electronic. So if that's something that's important to you, you know, shooting a fast frame rate, then that's faster than the R5 actually. But of course you sacrifice the megapixels, but that's the question that you've got to ask yourself, you know, how big are you going to print these pictures? You know, the reason it has a lower megapixel is so that the processor can process the raw files quicker, you know? It's also got eight stops of IBIS and a dual card slot, just like the R5. It also has the AF tracking modes like the R5, so it will track humans, people, and vehicles. And pretty much actually all of these cameras that I'm going to talk to you about has that AF tracking system, except for this little one here, the R100, which I'll come to later. It's a lovely little camera, but um, the rest of them will track humans, animals, and vehicles. The R6 is also good for filmmakers. It films 4K at 60 frames per second, which is more than enough, and its maximum ISO is 102,000 and something, all right? That is big. And it's got an RF lens mount, like all of these cameras, probably should have said that at the start, right? Um, all of these R-range cameras have got the RF lens mount. What that means is all of these cameras will take all RF lenses, all RF S lenses, and they're the lenses that are made for um, the crop sensor R range. And they will also take all the EF lenses, the Canon EF lenses with an adapter, okay? So if you've got old Canon EF lenses, you can still use them on these cameras, but you will need an adapter that goes in between the lens and the camera. So the R6 is a brilliant camera for any photographer, as you would expect, for 2,700 odd pounds. So if you're looking for still a pro model, right? Still a pro model, it's still really good. It's got more functions than you're probably ever gonna use, then you might wanna go for the R6 because it's cheaper than the R5. I mean, you can get a lens and the R6 for the price of the R5 body only, all right? So there's an option for you if you're going pro, should we say. Now the next one in the Canon R range is the Canon EOS RA. Now again, this one's easy and we'll spin through this because the RA is designed for astrophotographers, hence the A in the title there. 
It's got inside it a modified infrared filter that would allow you to get four times as much hydro alpha light to be transmitted. You're sitting there thinking, God, he knows what he's talking about. No, I don't. I've literally just read that off the Canon <laughs> website. And the reason we're going to speed through this camera is because if you are an astrophotographer, you know what that means and you don't need me to tell you. All right. So that particular camera is made specifically for astrophotography. Moving down the list, we have the Canon EOS R8. Now, the R8 is the entry level full frame camera. So, this one is simple, right? If you want full frame, but you are on a limited budget, the R8 is the one to go for. It's still a brilliant camera. It retails body only for £1,700. And it's actually more compact and lighter than the R5 and the R6. So, you know, you think about that. If, if that's also something that you want, full frame, a bit more compactor, then maybe the R8's for you as well. It's got the 24.2 megapixel sensor in it. So it's not as high res as the R5, but like I've said to you before, 24 megapixels is still good enough. You, know? <laughs> you rarely need more than that. It also shoots at 40 frames per second. So that's really fast frame rate. It does depend on this particular camera with the AF mode that you use and the lenses, etc. but still, it's still fast enough for anyone. It has the same AF tracking modes as the rest, you know, people, animals and vehicles, etc. Eye tracking, you know, and Canon's face and eye tracking has always been good. You know, I, on any of these cameras, that particular mode's going to be good. You can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second. So if you're a filmmaker or you're doing films, it's going to do the job again. And it's maximum ISO is the same as the R6. So it's 102,000 and something all right so again more than enough for anyone now its biggest pitfall is it doesn't have ibis all right the in body ibis now you can get that in the lenses so you're still going to have a bit of um, image stabilization but it doesn't have in body image stabilization okay so you've got to ask yourself if that's important it's really easy right if you hand hold and you're pretty much standing in the same place all the time, you, you know, it's, it's not going to be that important to you. If you hand hold and you kind of move around street photography, wildlife or whatever, it, the image body stabilization is probably going to help you out. But don't forget that comes at a massive price. This is a full frame camera at £1,700. So I think that this camera is for people that want full frame, at a low budget, who maybe need to take pictures in low light, who maybe need fast frame rates, and basically don't need the IBIS. The one thing that I would say between this camera and the R5 and the R6, I've already told you it's a bit more compact, but you can also feel that the R5 and the R6 are more solidly built, all right? It's lighter and it just feels like it won't take as much as a, of a bashing, shall we say, as the R5 and the R6 will. So if you're someone that's constantly using the cameras, you know, if you're a professional, you might want to go for the sturdy one because you're using it day in, day out. You know, you could be dropping it on the floor. The amount of times that I've swung around with my camera and it's hit the wall, <laughs> whatever it's done, you know, and then I've, like I said to you, I've, I've asked to use the 5D Mark IV. I've smashed that about for years and it still works absolutely fine. So that's something to consider. I don't think the R8 will take as much of a bashing as the, uh, the R5 and the R6. Moving down now to the R7. Now the R7 is Canon's top crop sensor model. It's top APS-C sensor model. And the body only currently is retailing at around £1,350. It shoots movies at 4K, so if you want to do a bit of filmmaking, it's going to be good enough for that as well. Its top ISO is 32,000, which is more than enough than, that you need. It can be boosted to 51,200, and it is a great crop sensor camera. Like I just said, it's Canon's top model. The R8 is obviously full frame, 
um, and this is a crop sensor, but this one has uh, 32 megapixels, whereas this one's got 24 meg megapixels, the full frame's got 24 megapixels. My opinion, I've just told you my opinion on that, if, it's, if, it's, if you're worried about megapixels, don't be worried about megapixels. That's, that's basically what I'm telling you there, unless you're gonna be printing, you know, absolutely massive. For most things, 24 megapixels and a full frame sensor. For photography, I think it's gonna be better than a crop sensor camera, personal opinion. Now, even though it's a crop sensor camera, it's as big or even bigger, as a matter of fact, than the R8, which is a full frame camera. And that's something that you should consider. What the R7 does have is loads of tech. You know, it's got a big processor in it, so it's gonna do your autofocusing really well. People, animals, cars, whatever. So it's got all of them settings in there. You've got up to 30 frames per second electronic. That is really fast. You've got seven stops of in-body image stabilization. You don't have that in the R8, don't forget. But like I've just said, it's got all the other tech, you know. <laughs> it's a hard decision to be totally honest with you. The R8 is 1,700 pounds. The R7 is 1,350 pounds. So the R8 is more expensive. And I think in this particular scenario, your biggest question is, do you want full frame or do you want a smaller kit and go for crop sensor? You know, that, that's basically your, the question that you need to answer if it's them two that you are comparing. Moving on down now to the EOS R10. Now, this would be considered the start of the entry level cameras. So if you're just starting out in photography, the ones that I'm gonna to talk to you about now are what Canon and what most people would call your entry level cameras, the ones that you probably buy first. Now before I go through the R10 and all of them other cameras, I wanna to talk to you about the courses that we run over at theschoolofphotography.com. If you wanna learn photography properly, right, there's no point having these cameras and not knowing how to use them. And believe me now, I have been teaching photography since 2002. The amount of people that turn up with these five grand cameras and don't know how to use them is, is immense, so I swear to God. And that is exactly where we step in, okay? We will teach you photography properly, and I mean properly in a structured way by professionally trained teachers. We don't just teach photography, neither. If you wanna learn wildlife photography, portrait photography, landscape photography, macro, if you wanna learn Lightroom properly, Photoshop properly, and many, many other genres of photography, we teach you it properly over at theschoolofphotography.com, but don't just take our word for it. Go and check out our reviews. So, if you do wanna learn photography properly, come over and see us at theschoolofphotography.com. So back to the R10, which is this one here. So the R10 is a crop sensor camera, APS-C sensor. It's a 24.2 megapixel camera, which so it's lower than uh, the R7 that we looked at a minute ago. And it's currently retailing body only at a thousand pounds. So still quite high. <laughs> so for an entry level camera, Body only price is actually quite high, but you will get some deals on the internet where it's a bit cheaper, you know, uh, a kit lens with that body, etc. But for what's described as an entry level camera, I still think it's quite highly priced. Its tagline for from Canon's website is, it's a camera for enthusiasts and content creators that want to be more creative, okay? That's that's its kind of tagline there. So I suppose what that means is if you are a content creator, if you're doing photography and video and you're on a low budget, you know, this camera's gonna grab all of that for you. It's also got all the AF tracking modes that we've spoke about previously in this video. It shoots up to 23 frames per second in electronic mode. You've got 4K video up to 60 frames per second and its highest ISO is 32,000. Again, that's extendable to 51,000 and something, I think. 
but you know that's high enough really. Now what it hasn't got is weatherproofing, what they call weatherproofing. The rest, what I've showed you so far, are weatherproof with the right weatherproofing lenses. Don't forget you need to, if you want it to be totally weatherproof, now let's just put that in a nutshell. If you're gonna be photographing in the rain, all right, or in the snow or whatever, a weatherproofing system will just help you out a bit, okay? It will just stop the camera from being ruined, shall we say. But in my experience, when the rain gets too much, you're out anyway, you can't photograph in it anyway. So, you know, take weatherproofing with a pinch of salt. It just depends on what you are gonna be doing. The other thing that this camera doesn't have is in-body image stabilization, which you probably would expect for cameras that when we start going below a thousand pounds. It does have this thing called digital stabilization, which I have used in other cameras before. It's not that good, to be honest with you. Um, it crops your image and everything. And so if, you, if, if image stabilization is what you need, then you really do need to go for a camera that's got in-body image stabilization. Moving down now to the R50. Now we're getting compact, right? It's, uh, it's lovely, it's a lovely looking little camera. Again, it's a 24.2 megapixel uh, crop sensor, and it's currently retailing at 740 pounds body only. Canon says it is perfect for content creators shooting videos and stills. Now that, that's, what, that's what they're gearing this one towards. And for me personally, I think that's about right. It's for beginners, beginner content creators that are on a low budget. You know, you're gonna get some seriously good quality out of this camera. It shoots at 15 frames per second and it does video in 4K, but it's 4K at 30 frames per second. It's got all the AF tracking as before, animals, people, etc. But remember that the processor in these cameras, these lower end cameras, are not gonna be as good as the processors in the higher cameras, which in turn means that the tracking is not gonna be as quick Still gonna be good though, you know, don't get me wrong. You know, I come from the days when, when no one even heard of tracking, you know. So watching these cameras track people and animals and cars is absolutely superb. Highest ISO is 32,000 again, and it's extendable like before. It doesn't have in-body image stabilization as before, and as you would expect for this price range. You can stick all the RF and all the RFS lenses on this camera, again, like you can for all the others. And it is a good little camera for the money. Now, if you are sitting there thinking to yourself, do I buy the R100 or do I buy the R50? I think that the main difference here is in the videoing, okay? The R10 shoots 4K at 60 frames per second. That really does come in handy when you're filming and you wanna just slow down at something half speed. Slowing down footage, half speed in videos looks good. So with the R10, you can do that at 4K. With the R50, you can't. You can do it in its 1080 in, in like normal HD, but not at 4K. So if I'm gonna be honest here, if that's not your thing, filming, and you was gonna choose between these two, the R10 and the R50, I'd probably go for the R50 because it's, it's just cheaper and it's gonna take, the images are gonna be just as good as what you would get on the R10. Personal opinion, again, give me comments uh, if you've got your own opinion on that, but hey, that's what I'm here for, to give you my opinion. And now we're gonna move on to my favorite, or say, let's say second favorite camera out of all of these that Wex sent me to play with, and that is the little R100. And if you've been sitting there, you would notice that I've put this center stage, right? Because I think that it is a blinding little camera. It is the entry level, the very lowest, the very cheapest of Canon models. It retails, currently body only, 489 pounds. You can get this with a lens, with a kit lens, for around 600 pounds, and a part, from the R5, which I have loved playing with, I must admit. Um, I've absolutely loved playing with this little camera. It's so cute, it's so small. It's got everything that you need to start learning photography. It's got a 24.1 APS-C sensor, which is the same 
as the R50 and the other ones that I've shown you. It will shoot at 6.5 frames per second electronic. Now when it comes to video, this shoots uh, in normal HD, it does all the HD stuff, but if you wanted to film in 4K, it crops the sensor by about 1.5, I think it is. So if you're shooting in 4K on this, it's gonna cut in a bit on your frame. So just be aware of that. And if I'm gonna be totally honest with you, um, I wouldn't be buying this for filming, this would just be for photography. That's just my personal opinion. If it is videography that's important to you, you might wanna start looking at another camera. But if it's just photography and you've got on a very low budget, you're just starting to learn photography, this is gonna be good enough. It has no IBIS, no in-body stabilization like what I've spoke about before. It takes all of the RF lenses as well as the RFS lenses, which is brilliant, which means you can put prime lenses on this. And here is my biggest tip for you guys. If you're on a budget and you're starting in photography, you could get one of these and some cheap prime lenses and you will be laughing. This will do a fantastic job with the Nifty 50, if you know what that is, that's the 50mm f1.8. And with the adapter, with the lens adapter, you can start getting EF lenses on, you know, auction sites, second hand, for cheap, and start putting them on this camera as well. Now, the one thing that it doesn't have is a rotating screen. You know, the rest, every single other camera that I have spoke about today has a screen, you know, a screen that pops out like that and twists. This camera basically doesn't, it's just got the screen on the back. So that is actually something to consider if you're a selfie person, right? If you're gonna be doing selfies, it's gonna be difficult on this because you can't flip the screen round. And the other thing to mention is this only has human tracking, all right? So it doesn't have the, uh, the animal tracking or the vehicle tracking like the others do. So there you go. My personal opinion on the R100 is it is a blinding camera for the money. Perfect entry level camera for learners. Because let's face it, if you're just getting into photography, you actually don't know whether you're gonna like it. You're not, you don't know whether you're gonna have time for it. <laughs> the amount of people I've seen buy these R6s and these R5s and whatever else, and then a year down the line they're on eBay, right? There's no point going down that route unless you are like a millionaire. I'll do what you want if you're a millionaire. But, but if you're on a budget, that is a perfect learning camera. You can get some RF lenses to go with it or some secondhand prime lenses like I've spoke to you about. And of course, my proper favorite camera is the R5. And I'll tell you something now, I'm gonna be on to Wex to see if they can do me one of these for cheap. So that's it guys, I hope it's not been too long, but at the end of the day, there was a lot of cameras to cover. And I know that people are gonna be comparing models and com with their budget, you know, do they get full frame, do they get crop sensor, do they go for fast frame rate, slow frame rate, higher megapixel, whatever. So hopefully I've covered that in this video and I'll give you some of my own opinion. Of course, there's gonna be people watching this video that have gone through that stage. And if you have, put your experience in the comments and help people out. That's what we're all about here at the School of Photography. So if you've liked this video, please do all them algorithm things that YouTube love, which is liking the video, sharing it with your friends, commenting, subscribing to our channel. At what we do here, relies on what you do there. I can't stress that enough. So if you're not subscribing and liking this video, you know, no more are gonna come. So please, if you've liked it, you know, share your love. And if you are subscribed and you've hit that bell button, you are gonna see the future videos where I am out testing these cameras out and having some real fun with these cameras and some absolutely pro expensive lenses, which I have loved. So there you go. I hope you've liked it. I'll see you in the next video. And remember, if you wanna learn photography properly, come over and see us at theschoolofphotography.com.